following is a paid program. The opinions expressed are not necessarily those of WNBU and Interbanks Media. Money. Welcome to All Things Money with David Blaine, a thoughtful and revealing discussion of actionable ideas and effective strategies to help you through the complex world of investing, taxes, and real estate. Now, with All Things Money, here's David Blaine. Hello and welcome to All Things Money. I'm your host, David Blaine. Thank you for joining us today. We've got a great show lined up for you. We're going to talk a lot today about inflation. A lot of talk in the news about uh, gas prices and things like that. And so I thought it would be useful to go through some basics about inflation as well as get into some details on uh, historical inflation and the, the Fed and their role in the process. But before we do, I'd like to invite you to go over to our website when you have a chance, www.dlblaine.com. There you'll find some good information on myself, my firm, as well as archived copies of the show. Hopefully you'll be able to stay with us for the full 30 minutes today, but if not, we'll post uh, an archive up there. You can catch up at a later time. A lot of our ideas for the show come from our viewers and listeners on 94.1 FM, WNBU, as well as cable TV 10 in New Bern. So if you have any comments or questions, you can contact us through the web. Of course, uh, we still use the old-fashioned telephone, 252 633-0107 633-0107 is the phone number. Or you can email us at allthingsmoney at dlblaine.com. Okay, so as I mentioned at the outset, we want to talk a little bit about inflation today. It's been in the headlines, you know, gas prices heading uh, up to $4 a gallon. I generally don't pay much attention to the price of gas. I'm fortunate I have all of the four-minute commute, <laughs> so I don't pay too much attention. But on the way into the studio here, I did make sure that I looked, and gas here was running about three eighty-six a gallon for regular, um, which is up significantly in the past uh, year. And, of course, if we go back three years ago, I think three years ago it was probably a, a dollar uh, seventy or eighty or something. So people are very concerned about that. So one of the things that I see when people talk in terms of risk and investing and risk, you know, in terms of their money, they talk about, oh, I don't want to lose money. Uh, I don't want my portfolio to go up and down in value. I don't like it when I open my statement and it's gone down. Um, I don't want to lose my money. Um, Those are certainly risks involved in investing. But the one thing that people tend to forget about is inflation. And especially for people that are overly conservative, the risk of your money losing purchasing power is the most insidious. It's sort of like the silent killer. It's like carbon monoxide. It's like you don't really know it's there, but when you know if it is, uh, it can certainly kill you. And that that happens with inflation. Is it? It just kind of exists in the background there, and you don't really notice it. Uh, but over years and years and years, it can avoid uh, erode the purchasing power of one's portfolio. And so it's prudent to take steps to protect against the ravages of inflation. Uh, We don't want to get too much into that today, but by simply owning some assets that can adjust with inflation, you know, stocks in the short term are are not really good inflation uh, protection, but in the long term, they're fantastic inflation protection that as inflation goes up, the, the price of goods and services must necessarily react to that and so the value of stock goes up over time. You also have uh, TIPS, Treasury Inflation Protected Securities, Um, commodities and real estate, real assets. Um, Gold has been cited as a decent uh, alternative to inflation. So there are things that you can do to protect yourself from inflation. Uh, What will not protect you from inflation is if you have Uh, some sort of fixed income that has no inflation adjustment to it. I know whenever someone comes in the office and if they have a government pension or a, uh, you know, federal government or state and local pension, they always adjust for inflation. If they have a corporate pension, I never see corporate pensions adjust for inflation. And there's a reason for that. It's very difficult. Most corporations understand the, the, uh, inflation and, and the vast amount of money that they would have to set aside where state and local governments and the federal government 
uh, you know, forgive this editorial, but they kind of ignore the actual cost of providing a pension, so they don't think twice about giving inflation protection, um, even though they don't can't fully comprehend the, the total cost of that. Uh, so somehow having your money fixed, you know, a CD or a, um, a bond that has a stated rate of interest rate other than a tip, these are not good um, things to have in an inflationary environment because you're locked in to a certain amount of income that is not adjusting for inflation. So that's just kind of a little introduction of why, why do we care about inflation? It's the, when you talk to your mother or grandmother and they used to pay, you know, five cents for a loaf of bread or uh, we went, went to the store last night and was buying some milk. By the way, there was some milk that, I have a large family, there's some milk that expired in uh, two days for 99 cents a gallon. So we bought all kinds of that milk. But normally, you know, you're going to pay around $4 a gallon for milk. Well, I remember, you know, going to the store as a kid, um, getting milk, you know, for, for the family, and it was like, you know, a dollar something a gallon, maybe $2. But it certainly at least doubled in price um, in, in that amount of time. And so over time, things go up in value. My, my grandfather owned a, a candy store, and my mo part of my mother's job was back in the old days, the machines couldn't give change, and so they would stick the change in the, uh, the wrapper, like for cigarettes, had the cellophane, they'd stick, like if it was nine cents a pack, they'd stick the penny in the cigarette pack. And so when you put your dime in, you'd get your change with the thing. They did that also with candy. Um, things that, that had a wrapper separate from the, from the product. Anyway, the point is that, you know, you used to have nickel candy bars and 10 cents a pack for cigarettes. So over time, prices go up. And the, the government agency tasked with um, keeping up with this is called the Bureau um, of Labor Statistics, the BLS. And they published something called the Consumer Price Index. Now we're kind of getting into the meat of, of the show here. Um, you've probably heard that the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, and what we want to do first off is delve into that. What exactly is the CPI? What do they mean when they say inflation went up 2% or inflation uh, minus food and energy went up um, you know, 1%? The, the CPIU, the CPI urban customer, you know, there's all sorts of different ways that inflation is measured, CPI, headline CPI, core CPI, urban CPI, um, different things that you may hear out there. And so we want to go through them and talk about them, explain what they mean, what's, what components are in them, and how you as an individual uh, can use that information, what information is good for you to know, what information um, is not that important. Well, we're coming up on our first break, so when we return, we'll continue with this discussion about inflation. For All Things Money, I'm your host, David Blaine. We'll be right back. <music> 